Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live on Patreon. And uh, we do thank you for those of you that are here. And if you're not a Patreon subscriber, keep in mind, it's one of the easiest, simplest ways to support the broadcasts that we do. Of course, you can donate online as well at IsraeliNewsLive.org. But Patreon, I think, is even simpler. It's, it's simple, patreon.com forward slash Israeli News Live. I'll put that in the description below for you. If you're not a Patreon, you heard the video on Israeli News Live. And uh, certainly become a subscriber. In fact, once you subscribe, you, you have access to all the videos that we've ever put on Patreon. A lot of different content there. And some months like this month, so much is going on. I haven't done as many videos, but uh, got this one and one more I'll be bringing out a little bit later today. So thank you and thank you for your help. This is supposed to be, by the way, a very simple message, but I don't think it's going to get so simple. Um, it's going to be simple in one way, but I made some amazing discoveries that I want to share with you. And we're going to get into that here as we go along. So let's get started. We're going to look at James here, and really what we're looking at is how we speak. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll go right to that. Um, I'm going to start with verse 10, James chapter 3, verse 10, so you kind of know where we're going. And then we're going to back it up a little bit, and we're going to look at a lot of different scriptures to go with this. James says, out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Do it the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So, uh, so can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. So what is James really getting into? Well, let's back up and let's look at what he's talking about. And then maybe I think this is really good for all of us, including myself. No different than you. It's learning to stay consistent with what we're speaking, what we say, that God can take and manifest in our lives the very things that are supposed to be, not just our own lives, our family's lives, etc., here we go. We're going to start with verse two, uh, verse 2 here in chapter 3. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. He's using the similitude of a horse having a bridle, a bit in its mouth, right? Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Well, imagine that. 2,000 years ago, they were using that as well, right? And, and it really is. I mean, those of you that know anything about riding horses, I've ridden them my whole life. Uh, you put that little metal thing inside their mouth there, and, and you get on that horse, and when you pull on it, it just makes that horse's head go whichever direction you want him to go. You want him to stop, he'll, he'll do whatever you want because that bit's in his mouth. So he uses that as that expression there. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. The governor, in other words, the captain of the ship. He still has a steering wheel. You got a little bitty paddle on the back of that, and back in those days, sailing ships and stuff. And once it turns, doesn't matter how hard that wind's blowing, that ship's going to turn and follow the direction that you steer it into. Makes sense. I understand ships, so I definitely get that. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Wow. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Even so, the tongue. I'm talking about this little that thing right there in our mouth, boasteth great things, and behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Now, how can your tongue defile the whole body. Have you ever thought about that? Wow. Now that's one to really think about. You're going to get that even more as I share some scriptures from what Jesus says. 
But the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. In other words, your hand can do something. Your legs can do something. Your feet can do something. You know, literally your feet can take you to go do mischief and harm your neighbor. You get angry and he says something you don't like. Next thing you know, you're out there and you done punched him upside his head. So the members of your body can do a lot. But your tongue can do a lot more damage than your fist by far. In fact, he says that it defileth the whole body. So I got, you think about it, right? How can your tongue defile your whole body? It's easy. We do it every day. We do it not even realizing what we're doing. Before I show you, and we're going to stay right here with James, but I got to show you something here in Mark. We talked about this recently. For verily I say unto you that, whatso, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says or saith I use the word says for the purpose if we ever translate the video it picks it up easier so in other words whatever you say it will come to pass therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them Again, what are you doing? You're speaking. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. So that's, that's catch 22, in other words. If you're merciful, God will be merciful for you. And he's just letting you know. Why does he say this right here? Because sin, hidden in your heart, will hinder your prayer before God or your petition. And it makes sense because if you've ever had sin, sin hidden in your heart and you're trying to believe, boy, that just eats at you in the background, doesn't it? It's like you're sitting there, you believe and you have need. You're, you're sitting there and you're saying, Lord, I have need. I got Maybe it's a financial struggle and you're just saying, Father, I, you know, I need a miracle. I really, really, really need a miracle. Would you help me, Lord? And you can't get it out of your mind, somebody you did something wrong to. And maybe it's just the way you said something. And again, what is it? It's that right there. It's that tongue. It sets on the whole world of fire. Very easy. And it's especially in my case, right? Because I speak to you guys. One wrong thing. That's why when I do make a mistake, I say something that's not correct. I like to correct that. Make that right. Right? And by the way, as I say that, one thing that comes to my mind was when I mentioned to you guys a little while back about my email address that had been done in my name that I had assumed that that was done kind of clandestinely. But I found out later I had given permission for that. And I just totally forgot about it. So I do stand corrected. So here I am saying this to you. And the one thing of all things that comes to my mind is that right there. Why? Because I meant to, and I'd actually said to that person, I'll correct that publicly. And I never did correct it. I told, I just, so many things got going on and one thing led to another and I forgot. But I want to make sure I, I correct that. Uh, now I don't, I do have the access to it now, but I don't, you know, there's a lot of issues behind that. We won't get into any of that there, but, uh, but the thing is, I don't use that email address. And I think that was done under Steve uh, Denon at gmail.com. Uh, so it's not really an active email, but I had given permission when the person was setting it up and I totally forgot about it. And because we weren't having any communication at the time and I had assumed that that had been done under false pretense and that was wrong. So there we go. We're in this message and we get to clear things up right from the very beginning. All right. So now let's look at this though. Seriously, when there's nothing hindering you, you can have whatever you ask. 
All right, so let's go back to James, though, because I really want to focus on this one part right here. Let me find it again. Um, turns about the whole body. Okay, there we go. Behold, how great a matter of fire kindleth. Oh, yeah, here we go right here. He says here, verse 6, And the tongue is a fire, a whole world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body. The whole body, your entire body. How can it defile your body? Okay, because he's going, he's showing you different things. It's not just the fact of what you said about your friend or your neighbor or you bear false witness or, you know, you might be a minister out there and you preached a message and you made a mistake. You know, now I'm not talking about you did a little little unintentional thing or something or you were reading the Bible and you misquoted a word or something like that. People understand we make mistakes like that. You don't have to be micromanaging every little thing. But the thing is, like, for example, you teach, like I taught at one time that uh, Zionism was was truly a thing of God, that it was right, the right thing. And I really believed it. See, but the thing is, is what was I doing? I was putting out their false information, which created what? It created, among many people, no doubt, a hatred for Palestinian people. What are you doing? That one little member was setting a whole world on fire. And when God opened my eyes, I had to go and correct that. But in this case, it talks about that it defileth the whole body. And you're like, Steve, would you please tell us what in the world you're saying? You're not even saying it yet. The whole body is your and I'm assuming this is what James is talking about. He's talking about, and it could be the body of Christ, but I, I'm assuming he's looking at your body. It defiles your body. How? What do people do? Especially as they get older. Well, I got arthritis, and I got, I got rheumatoid arthritis, and I got heart trouble. Well, it runs in my family. We all have... You know, uh, heart conditions in our family. Well, we got uh, tumors in our family, cancer runs in our family, all kinds of things. And every time you say those things, you're prophesying those things into reality. It defiles the whole body. That Remember what Paul said that one time? I don't think I brought that scripture up. Maybe I have it up here. We'll see here in a minute. He said, think upon these things. Let me pull it up. I just want to make sure that I have it because um, think upon these things. Let's just see if that pulls it up. No, it doesn't pull it up like that. Um, nope, still didn't pull it up. Whatsoever, let's try lovely. I think that's another way. Yeah, here we go, right here. Uh, let me put it here so we can just do it like this here. That way you'll see it still. Let me blow it up. Find that, where's that player? We go plus sign there. Philippians chapter four and verse eight. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So even your thought matters to God. And then what your thought is, many times your tongue is going to express so if you have an ailment in your body, and I'm not saying that you don't have one, and I'm not necessarily saying that you've talked yourself into getting it. It can happen, though. You, I've seen many times people that will be so negative. That's all they can think about. They're looking for every negative thing that could possibly go wrong. Fears, you know, that this is going to happen or that's going to happen. Before long, they end up with the very things they're afraid of. That's actually a saying of Jesus's as well, but it's in one of those um, Gospels that they did not canonize. He said, the very things that you fear, you will draw to yourself. 
So you got to think about what you're saying, right? And so that's why the whole that's why the whole body gets defiled from that one little member in your body in your mouth called your tongue because every time you speak negative, every time you say it runs in my family. I'll never forget there was an old minister brother, a friend of mine from South Africa. Uh, his name was Theo, and he said one day, he goes like this, he said, I always hear people saying, you know, hey, you know, it runs in the family, you know, hey, we got arthritis, hey, you know, we got asthma runs in the family, hey, we got diabetes runs in the family, hey, you know, all these things. He said, well, you know, he said, not in my family. He said, I'm from the family of God. I am from the family of Jesus Christ. And he said, and in Jesus, there is no sickness. There is no, no, none of these things exist in him. So in my family tree, he said, nothing exists like that. He said, why? Because I have been born again. And that's right. You know, my wife said an interesting thing to me this morning, right? Because I was using the tongue for the wrong reason. You know, I'm making, because I'm dealing with some issues going on physically and and she says, I don't see those things. Why do you want to confess like that? Think about it. She said, what you say is going to happen. She says, so go ahead and prophesy for yourself. She was right. She was right. So we need to be careful about that. So let's look, let's continue. And setteth a fire, a course of nature, and is set on the fire of hell. For every kind of beast and birds and serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and, and have been tamed of mankind. And that's so true. We can tame a horse. We can make a bird talk. We can take uh, over in India, they can take and make the, the, the cobra come up out of the hole and do all kinds of weird things with playing a flute. We've trained dolphins. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Wow, now that's a powerful one right there. Now you've got to think about it, though, because when we look at what Jesus did, it seems that he would take and bless one and curse the other. But what was he cursing? Was it man? Was it sin? Hmm. That's one to think about. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. What he's trying to show you is be consistent. You know, even when I am hard on Israel, I am hard on Netanyahu and all of these guys for the evils they are doing and taking the lives of these children. That is okay to be hard upon them. But I still have a desire that they might come to really know the true loving Savior, Jesus Christ. I never waver from that. But I will not sit by and idly tolerate sin when children are being massacred by the tens of thousands. And as I shared recently, the video wasn't very popular either. A lot of people didn't like that idea too well, you know. Like the, when I was being asked down in the, this, this convention in Orlando, and the sister says, you know, but in time past, God told Israel they were to kill every man, woman, and child. I said, yes, true. In the past, he told them to do that. I said, but then today you would negate the blood of Jesus Christ to kill every man, woman, and child. There is a new covenant. And that covenant applies to every Jewish person as well. As Jesus, or maybe as Paul that said this, if you live under the law, you shall die by the law. So what side do you want? I want mercy. Do what the fountain send forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. And that, my friend, is very true. Let's continue on in Hebrews. 
Remember what we said about this. The word hoped is actually not correct translation here. Now, faith is the substance of things expected, not hoped for. Expected. That was the right translation. And that's a Greek word. It's not a Hebrew word. Faith is the substance of things expected. The evidence of things not seen. For by the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Again, how is it framed? By what he said. He spoke something that even though nothing existed around him, he spoke it, he believed what he said, and it manifested. Now, oh, this is the thing that my wife said to me this morning. I, I, I thought about it and then failed to mention it. She said, does God live in you? And I said, yes, he does. And I knew right where she was going with that point. If God is living within you, then why are, are you in a sickly condition? Because the thing is, is everything that God is, healing, love, mercy, long suffering, everything that he is, we are as well because those of us that he, his spirit lives within us, then we can ask what we will. You know, when I pause like that, it's because something just struck my heart. And this was one that I didn't want to forget from earlier. So, I may have to do a separate message on that, but I've got to look that up. Anyway. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice and came by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God translated him. Imagine that. So much faith that he didn't die. And for those of you that believe in a rapture, you don't have to have that type of faith. Hmm. Moving on, Isaiah. I wanted to really bring this one out because this is, this is where it caught my attention, by the way, with the word faith here. And the head of Ephraim, we're actually in the book of, I think it's Isaiah chapter 7, I think. Yes, Isaiah chapter 7. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. And the head of Samaria is Ramaliah's son. If you will not have faith, surely you shall not be established. Huh. If you will not have faith, surely you will not be established. Now, I thought that was interesting that God is telling them if they don't have faith, it's not, they're not going to be established. They're not going to stand. Now, the interesting thing here is the word that is used for faith. And I have highlighted the root of that word. Amin. This one here, Alap Min Yodnun, over here it's Amen is the root of the word. I'm not pronouncing the entire word because these are prefixes and suffixes added to the word to give it more meaning. But it almost looks like amen that we say. And in one reality, that's kind of what this is here. Amen. This one, though, has a yod in there which gives it the means down instead of amen or amen, main. Now, that could still be the same thing. See, surely you shall not be established. All right, hold that thought now. But notice also it's faith. If they don't have faith, they're not, it's not going to be established. They're not going to be sound. And it's not going to happen what he is saying without faith. 
Now, interestingly enough, this is also where we get, as it goes on, and the Lord spoke again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, ask it either in depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I try the Lord. And he said, Hear you now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, that you will weary my God also? Therefore, so now he gives them, and this is interesting because he's talking about without faith it won't be established, that house that he's speaking of. In other words, um, if you're going back up here, the head of Ephraim is Samaria. And actually, let me back up so you understand really more the context behind this. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall not stand. Now, shall it, we'll back it up. Because Aram, or Syria, because Syria hath uh, counseled evil against you, Ephraim also, and the son of Ramaliah, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, set up a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabel. Thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. Ephraim also represents the house of Israel. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. And the head of Samaria is Ramaliah's son. If you will not have faith, surely you shall not be established. So what he's saying is, is the reason why the house of Israel finally broke up and got spread everywhere was because of lack of faith. But then he goes on to give them a sign. He said, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Okay. Okay. Now he's talking about Ha'alma. That's the young woman. Behold. Um, excuse me. I forgot to read the first part there. Okay. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you. Uh, uh, give for you a sign. That's it right there. Lachem ot. Okay. Behold, hine ha'alma. Behold, a young woman. Hara yeladat bain. She shall give birth to a son. Okay. That's that right there. It doesn't say, it doesn't use betula, which means virgin. It does use the word young woman. We're assuming the young woman's a virgin, though, because she's a young woman and she's going to give birth to a son. But then it goes on to say, Vikara Shemo, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay, you shall call his name Emmanuel. But the point is, without that faith, they won't be established. And the thing is, is even Judah did not believe. But a remnant did. Even the house of Israel, a remnant came back and did believe. Now, I know, like I said, it's kind of weird. I started off to wanted this to be very simple, talking about faith and everything, but then I got into this because of this whole word of faith and then the way it was here. And then I saw here for the word establishes, amen, amen, and then amen is the way you use for the word faith. And it took me down a very, very interesting journey. We're going to go into that in just a moment here. All right, Isaiah, another example of the believing. You are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me. And again, I mean. And you, Veta, that's what this is right here, Veta, and you believe now, that's the interesting. They put the Vav there. Maybe it should be translated and know and believe. Instead of believe me, well, the Li right there is a word for me. All right. So that you will that you will believe me. I understand. I was, almost made a mistake there. Forgive me. So, Lema'an Tadau. All right. Uh, that you may know. And that you may believe me. And again, amin is the word for believe. Now, I'm, I'm going down this road for a reason. Let me see if before I go any further, if Mark, before I drop into Matthew real quick. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say, okay, I shall argue this. I did, we did this one when we first started. 
Let me just make sure, because I, I re-recorded this message like a half a dozen times, so just in case I thought it's another message, let's go over this one more time. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, but in his heart, doubt shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. That's what you speak, that's what you say, right? Uh, before I, again, before I go into Matthew, let me jump over here to the book of Job. By the way, this one here in Job, I believe, is almost a prophecy. Um, maybe not, but it seems to be. He scorned at the torment of the city, and neither heareth he the shoutings of the driver. Uh, we are in Job, and I forget, chapter 39 and verse 7, going down to verse 12. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searcheth after every green thing. Will the wild ox be willing to serve you, or will he abide by, your, by the crib? Canst thou bind the wild ox with his band in the furrow, or will he harrow the valleys after you? Uh, will you thrust him because his strength is great, or will you leave thy labor to him? Then we read here, will you rely on him that he will bring home thy seed and gather the corn of thy threshing floor? As I look at this, I feel like I'm actually seeing a prophecy of Christ in here. And maybe people don't even notice this. Will you thrust him is a good point right there. You know how like in the uh, Manador the bull ring fights and stuff, and they take the sword and thrust him through. You can't help but think of Christ here, but I'll tell you why. It's because of what it says here in blue and Hebrew. They have here, will you rely on him? But it's not what it says here. It actually says here, will you believe in him? I mean, and the word I mean, is clearly the word believe. That's why I've been showing you these already, and I'm going to show you more. Will you believe both in him? Will you believe in him? And it doesn't say that he will bring home thy seed. Because he will return your seed. and gather the corn of thy threshing floor. It's kind of like the kinsman redeemer here. It's kind of like Boaz and Ruth, the Moabitess. And David is from her loins. He is from the, uh, uh, through her mother, through her lineage. So think about it. David isn't even a full-blooded Jewish guy. A lot of people never think of those things, do they? All right? Maybe now is a good time before I continue on. I want to share with you some beautiful things from the book of Matthew in the Hebrew language that goes into a lot of these same issues and same usages. And let's see. I want to, well, we'll start. We can start with that one right there. All right? Truly, I right, watch here. This is from uh, the book of Matthew. And I forget which verse this is in, but you'll, you'll recognize the verse. Jesus heard and was amazed and said to those who were following him, Truly I say to you, I have not found a great faith in Israel like this. I say to you that many will come from the east and from the west and will rest with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heavens, uh, heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast into the darkness of Gehenna. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, right? You know the verse. What's fascinating, though, is the word truly and the word faith that is used here. And it's not the same as belief. Aman, like saying amen, is what he says here. Truly, I say to you. So the word amen, as we know it, like when David in the psalm says, Amen and Amen and Amen, right? It's saying truly. Aman ani omer lachem lo, matzati, 
amana, excuse me, aman, amana, amana, which is faith. And again, it's right here in this blue right here on your screen with that little green in the middle. See, instead of just saying aman or amen, right, like you have here, alaf mem nun, now we have alaf men vav nun, the hey feminizes the word is all. I have not found a great faith. Hmm. I am a sinful man and I have authority under the Pharisees and I have horses and riders and I say to one of them, go and he goes and come and he comes to, to my servants to do this, to do that. They, they do it. You remember that was the Roman centurion, which means he had a hundred soldiers underneath him. That's why he was called a Roman centurion. Centurion was a hundred of the soldiers. And he knew that those, sol that those soldiers obeyed him and he knew then therefore whatever Jesus said with his tongue, it would happen. And so Jesus says, Amen, truly, I say to you, Ani omer lachem, lo matzati. I have not seen such a great amina. I have not seen such a great faith, Gedola, which is the great Be Yisrael in Israel. That was because that Roman soldier, a Gentile, he knew that all Jesus had to do was just speak it, and whatever he said would manifest, and he believed it. He had he had faith. Okay, now watch these spellings though. Uh, another scripture here, because John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did no, not believe him. But, well, let me back up. This one's interesting too. I found this very fascinating. Um, okay. Let's start at verse 25. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or from men? They grieved among themselves, saying, what will we say? If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why did you not believe him? If we say from men, we fear the crowd because of all of them believe John was a prophet. Notice that right there. If we say... <laughs> if we say, watch this, if we say from men, in other words, it really wasn't from God, we fear the crowd because of them believe on John was a prophet. Why do they fear the crowd? That's because the crowd were, were made up of violent men and harlots. Otherwise, they wouldn't have feared the crowd. So they said, we do not know. He said, also, I will not tell you by what power I do this. And that evening, Jesus said to his disciples, what is your opinion? A certain man who had two sons, he approached one and said to him, go. Um, I can't see the rest of that son today and work in my vineyard. He said to him, I do not wish to, to but afterward he repented and went. And he said to the other, likewise, and he answered him, here I am, sir. But he did not go. By the way, if you ever pay attention, he's actually speaking of the same story. Now he's just telling a different parable about the guys because they didn't believe. He said to him, I do not wish to, but afterward he repented and went. He said to the other likewise, and he said to him, here I am, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said to him, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I say to you. Hmm. Let's look at verse 31 real quick here. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. I'm trying to get to the right spot here. Just Oh yeah, here we go again. Again it is. You can't see it on the screen here. I don't know if I can highlight it. I can't highlight it right there. See where my mouse is there? When he says, truly I say to you, amen. So we know now the word amen means truly. I say uh, unto you, omer lechem. Violent men and harlots will precede you. 
into the kingdom of heaven. The very people they feared, in other words. Because John came to you in a way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But violent men and harlots believed him and you saw it and did not turn in repentance. Also afterward, you did not repent to, uh, to believe him. Um, I know there's a word missing in there, but I won't worry about it right now. But again, here we go. The root of that is amin. That is the Aleph Mem Yod Nun. Just like we saw in the Hebrew, if you remembered earlier, uh, where do we have that? It, right here is a good example here. Uh, will you rely on him? But it doesn't say will you rely on him. It says, uh, uh, will you believe in him? That's literally what it says. Will you believe in him? And the Hebrew Matthew only confirms that. And let's see which one we were at. Right here. Here we go. Um, and then it says here, we do not repent to believe in him. Uh, and that's exactly what it says. To believe, I mean, bo. Not believe him, but literally it said believe in him. They don't put that in there. They should have. Believe in him. You did not repent to believe in him. And so that's how we know the way it should be translated. And of course, what we had over there in the, uh, what was that? That was written in Job 39. That's why I say, I can't help but wonder if this is not, you know, especially in light of that, will you thrust him? You know, I know it's talking about an ox, but you can't help but wonder, are they not? I mean, by the way, not just Job, Enoch did the same thing when Enoch used all these different animals to actually lay out the entire course of the history of Israel. How did he know all that? But he spoke it as a parable. All right, let's go now to yet another one. This one, uh, and again, I don't have on here which chapter it's in. Jesus heard and was amazed and said to those who were following him, truly I say to you, I have not found a great faith in Israel. I think we already looked at that one. Yeah, we did. We did look at that one. Let me see what we have here. We got that one. Did that one already. This one's just purely amen, which means truly. Um, do not lead us into the power of temptation, but keep us from all evil. Amen. Truly. Okay, so now you know what that is. Let's see if we, we got. Okay. Ah, this is another interesting one here as well. And it is a little bit different. He answered them and said, Indeed, Elijah will come and will save all the world. Okay. Now, it's actually amen but with a mem sofit to follow it. Is that because of a different spelling? And that's how what it would actually mean would be indeed. But it could also be truly. But it also is like in a plural to go with it. So is it truly as a pluralization because of the fact that he comes more than once? That is a very interesting question because it's Eliyahu Yabo. Ve, uh, Yeshua, Yeshua kol ha'olam, uh, that he will come and save all the world. He will come. And by the way, that is not in a present tense at that time of his day. He put the coming of Elijah in the future. Now he does go on to say, I said to you, he's come already. They did not know him and they did to him according to their desire. So they will do to the son of man. Wow. Wow, very fascinating. And the mere fact that the amen, the indeed, or the word indeed, indeed, and truly are self same words, they're just synonyms of the, of the same word, but it's in the plural. Is it in the plural because Elijah comes more than once? I never saw that before either. That's why I said this whole thing has taken me down such a fascinating, fascinating journey. Um, let's see. He who causes one of the small lads who believe on me to stumble. There again. Amin, but with the yod in there, which separates from belief in the word faith. So faith and belief, although they seem similar, similar, 
in the way they are, and they are written similar, but they have different spellings. So there is a tad of difference, at least in the Hebrew language, of the meaning of both those words. Now, let's just get ready to close on this. We'll look at a few more things here. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me. And again, Yaminu. Uh, that right there, I mean for the word believe. They will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto you. And the Lord said unto him, What is it in your hand? He said, A rod. Um, I always love this scripture here because he says, Cast it down on the ground, it'll turn to a serpent, it turns to a serpent. Put your hand into your bosom, it turns leprous, brings it back out. Second time, and it's, it's healed. Um, and then God says, Lema'an ya'aminu. Ya that they may believe. Ya'aminu. I love it. Ki na'ra elecha yehova. Okay, that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, and the God of Abraham, Elohai avotam, Elohai Avraham, Elohai Yitzhak, Elohai Yaakov. They will believe in the God of Jacob and hath appeared unto you. And the Lord said, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me back up. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it alone for right now. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, put now thy hand into thy bosom, right? He, he does that, he turns, that's where he turns to leprosy, right? That's what I want to get past there. And it shall come to pass, There it is again about believing. If they will not believe you, if, there it goes right there, if, if they will not believe you, singular, nobody else, just Moses, if they will not believe you and not hear you, not hear not here. Uh, neither here. The first sign. Or believe. The voice. Or the voice of the latter sign. That's why you have both former and latter rain. If they won't believe these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice that you shall take out of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou hast taken out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. Maybe I'll do a share, share that for another day, going into all that detail there, but it's still fascinating to me. Psalm 41. I don't remember why I have Psalm 41. Oh, it's because of the Amen part. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from the everlasting to everlasting, truly and truly. Amen. Ve amen. So, very interesting how these words are so closely related. And really, what I wanted to just finish up and saying here is belief. Speak what you have desire of. Don't doubt it. And God will certainly manifest that in your heart there. Uh, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And I'm going to speak and believe it that God will lay it upon uh, your heart to want to support the work we do. And you can do so easily. Uh, the Noon Institute, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872, if you choose to do that by mail. Or even the easiest way, just click right there. Donate online. Click here. You click right there. Uh, by the way, even though it says donate with PayPal, you can donate with any debit or credit card. That's why it says donate with debit or credit card. And we really thank you and God bless you for doing that. And two, you guys don't know this, right? I'm serious. This is the thing that my wife was talking about to me this morning. Uh, I, was, I was getting a little bit of a struggle again of walking, and I wasn't wearing the Eon patch. And my wife says, you don't even need the Eon patch. You need to believe. And uh, But I put on the Eon patch anyway. Well, boy, my nerves have been connecting again like crazy. And even while doing this video, oh, my gosh, you can feel as the nerves connecting your body. So if for some reason you need that little boost and you want to do something to help yourself, you want to get involved with LifeWave, we certainly appreciate you. Thank you for it. Uh, if you want to shop, always remember, if you shop and get like X39 for stimulating your stem cells or something like that, be sure to get on um, 
what they call well, get $15, 15 cash back on your first purchase. Oh wow, I didn't know that. 15 bucks back on your first purchase, free shipping. Huh, I hadn't seen that before, so that's new. Well hey, I'm always about you guys saving money, so definitely do that. But let's just say you got the X39, instead of paying 149, you wanna get it for that $99 price. And uh, click on this right here, add to, when you go to hit your add to your cart, click on your cart order. Okay, when you go to that cart and you're gonna get ready to check out, you wanna become a preferred customer, right? If you do the PC Plus program for $19 a year, or 20 bucks a year, we should say, uh, they'll send you free patch samples every month to try something new. I think that's kind of a cool idea. A lot of people I know that do it love that program. Otherwise, the other thing is just to say, if you want to do this as a business, some people want to do a business. Hey, don't knock it. Let people do what they want to do. Definitely just click the word join. When you click join, they've got all these different ways to enroll. Even though you have these prices at different roles there, you get product. So it's not that you're paying to enroll, you're getting a product. And really, I look at that as product for a business. If you're real serious about business, you, in other words, you're not here to play games, you're, you, you feel like there's some people that really would like to participate. You may be a doctor, a chiropractor, and you're listening to this and you've been thinking about doing this photo bio, biomodulation therapy for, for your business practice, for your patients, you wanna try this for your patients, I would encourage you to go straight to Diamond. Yes, it is $1,600, but you get enormous number of patches, almost, well, you're gonna get 20 patches, uh, packages of patches, which uh, is an, actually a $2,000 value at discounted price, I might add. But you can do, as I've always said, you could actually close that out, especially if you're doing this as a business uh, and you're wanting to have more of the different patches. And then you could go down here and let's say, instead, you're gonna give some to your patients. So you really wanna maybe go ahead and go with maybe say eight packages of X39. So I'm gonna click that eight times, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, that's because you're wanting to be able to retail that out to some of your customers. And let's say though you want to try some of your patients on the X49. We'll click on maybe four of those. One, two, three, four. Until that line there goes green, it's not full yet. All right, now we may come back again to X39, X49, but XP6 is very good if you're a doctor especially you've got patients that are women they want to balance hormone you don't want to do identical hormone therapy maybe you want to click on four of those so i clicked on four of those if you're dealing with dementia carnosine is a must x39 x49 and carnosine is really the really the best setup you could do i would go ahead and do four of those two three and four okay we're still not full. That's the advantage of doing this. Glutathione is another amazing patch. So I would maybe do four of those. And again, I'm saying this as if you're looking at doing, you're the serious person about business. Uh, Alavita, I found out, did me wonders when I came off of prednisone because it helped, uh, it stimulates the pineal gland, which stimulates all the glands in your body. And unfortunately, prednisone just really wreaks havoc on your glands in your body. So maybe do a couple of those. And because you're doing it as a business, you're wanting to try more options out there. Uh, you might want to get the energy enhancer. Let's just say we did one. Ah, I went over, so I got to take one off. So let me take the energy enhancer back off. Let's find that rascal. Where is it at? Okay. All right, okay, I got Alavita. Let me just take off one Alavita. Whoa, goodness. Let's do two. That way I've still got my, well, I still, let's see, X39. Something didn't work right. I think I knocked out a couple of patches. Let's see. Um, let me just add one Alavita, see if that puts us where I needed to go. 
still got a little bit more room there so I jump back over here and I want to do that energy enhancer let me put that in there that should fill the that does then you're complete like I said you could go with all x39 because let's say as a doctor or chiropractor you're wanting to be able to share more of the x39 you can do that and leave your cart the way it is I'm just showing you a way uh, an example that you could actually join those of you that are really serious business minded so anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.